So I'm here in Uji right now, the first major matcha production area in Japan. In medieval Japan, demand for tea was expanding in the capital of Kyoto. To keep up with all this demand, the production of green tea shifted south to the area of Uji. Uji was strategically positioned in between Kyoto, the current capital city, and Nara, the original capital city of Japan. Uji is still famous today for its excellent quality green tea. Many tourists come to Uji every year to take part in the culture and history of green tea. In medieval Japan, the primary way to drink green tea was in powdered form, also known as matcha or powdered tea. To produce ceremonial grade matcha, first the tea leaves need to be cut off from sunlight. This is done with a special type of netting called kabuse. When a plant is cut off from sunlight, it produces more chlorophyll to compensate for the lack of sun energy. What makes the tea plant unique is that it also produces more caffeine and theanine. Caffeine has a stimulating effect on the body, while L-theanine has a more calming effect. By combining the two, you get the most desirable elements of both, giving you a calm, alert sensation throughout the day. Contrary to coffee, matcha does not give you a crash or jitters later on in the day. Shading the tea plant doesn't only produce more theanine and caffeine, it also changes the color of the tea plant. The excess chlorophyll production turns the plant from a lighter green color to a deep jade green color. Because theanine is responsible for the sweet and umami flavors of the green tea, shaded teas tend to have more sweetness. By shading a tea, you reduce the bitter catechins and increase the sweet and savory theanine. This is of course what tea drinkers want in a matcha, a sweet and smooth flavor with no bitterness. After a tea farmer shades the leaves of the matcha for 21 days or more, the work is still not done yet. The farmer then has to pick only the top two or three leaves of the tea plant to use in the matcha. The top leaves are the youngest on the tea plant and are known to have a sweeter flavor with less bitterness. They also have a higher concentration of nutrients. Once the leaves for matcha are picked, the stems and veins of the tea are removed. What's left is a type of tea known as tencha, a shaded tea that has had all of its stems and veins removed. The stems of the tea plant detract from the sweet and umami flavor, so they need to be removed in order to maximize the taste. Once the stems and veins of the tea are removed, the leaves are put into a stone matcha mill and ground into a fine powder. It takes approximately one hour for this mill to produce 50 grams of precious ceremonial grade matcha. The result is a powerful, vibrant green tea that is sweet, savory, and loaded with caffeine and theanine, giving you a calm alertness throughout the day. Of course, matcha is famous for its use in the Japanese tea ceremony, an important part of medieval Japanese culture. Before the development of the modern tea ceremony, tea was seen as an opportunity for the upper classes to showcase their wealth. They held gatherings in opulent tea rooms with fancy utensils, and thus the early tea ceremonies became a constant game of one-upsmanship. Then a man known as Sen no Rikyu came along with a more humble vision for what the tea ceremony should look like. Rather than a gold-plated facade, Rikyu advocated for a rustic and small tea house away from the noise of the city. The first step of the tea ceremony begins not when you walk inside the tea room, but actually on the path leading up to it. While walking along this path, guests purify their hearts and thoughts and leave their worldly worries behind. In a symbolic gesture, guests also purify their hands and mouth in this water before entering the tea room. This allows them to wash away the dust from the outside world. The guests then wait outside the tea room to quiet their mind before entering. The tea ceremony is built on the philosophy Wa Ke Se Jaku, harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility. An example of harmony is shown in the gardens around the tea room. The gardens are to be an extension of the flora surrounding it, living in harmony with nature. The next concept is ke, or respect. The guests need to respect all things, regardless of their status or position in life. This is demonstrated at the entrance of the tea room, where guests crawl through a small door. In order to get through the door, they need to bow. Samurai must bow, 
emperors must bow, and commoners must bow. Once inside the tea room, all guests are equal, regardless of their status outside. The third concept, se, or purity, is demonstrated by the tea master once the guests enter the tea room. Through a series of refined movements, the tea master cleans and purifies the utensils used in the ceremony. The concept of se does not simply refer to physical purity, but also spiritual and mental purity. The guests need to purify their mind of thoughts and worries when entering the tea house. It is only then that they will be able to enjoy something as simple as a bowl of tea in silence. Finally, after all three concepts are discovered and embraced, all people in the ceremony can embody jaku, or tranquility. This was the vision that Sen no Rikyu had for the tea ceremony, and his teachings still live on, not only inside the tea room, but outside as well. The inside of the tea room is modestly decorated. Each tea ceremony follows a theme, and that theme is simply conveyed through the use of a flower arrangement and a scroll. The theme of today's tea ceremony is wood, and the flower arrangement conveys the leaves beginning to fall from the trees. The scroll on the wall expresses the intention of cleansing our hearts before the upcoming winter season. The theme of wood is also conveyed in the objects used in the tea ceremony. Here is an incense holder made from bamboo gathered around Uji. There is also another small object that is used to produce a specific scent in the tea room. The rest of the objects are used for the preparation of the matcha. First, we have the hishaku, a bamboo ladle used to scoop hot water out of the kama, or iron pot. A small square is carved out in the tatami mats to make room for this iron pot and keep the water hot throughout the day. Next, we have the tea bowl, or chawan. This is a clay bowl made by hand, inspired by Furuta Oribe, a disciple of Sen no Rikyu. The bowl has a certain weight to it that conveys the importance of what's inside. Next we have the fukusa, a cloth that is used to clean off the tea utensils before using them. This is a sign of respect for the guests and it is done in a series of graceful movements. The natsume, or tea caddy, is the vessel that the matcha powder is kept in. Matcha tea has to be protected from light and humidity to maintain its quality. The chashaku is the bamboo spoon used to scoop the matcha powder into the bowl, and the chasen is the bamboo whisk that's used to mix the powder into water and form a nice foam. To prepare the matcha for the tea ceremony, the host first must prepare the tea whisk and the tea bowl. She pours hot water from the iron pot into the tea bowl to warm it up. Then, she will take the tea whisk and gently soak each side of it. This does two things. First, it heats up the tea bowl so that it does not cool the matcha down too quickly. And it also makes the bamboo whisk more pliable. The chasen tea whisk is made out of a single piece of bamboo with very fine bristles that can break if it is too brittle. That is why she gently moves the whisk through the water first before preparing the tea. The host then discards the water into a kensui or wastewater bowl. The bowl is then cleaned with a different type of cloth, called the chakin. Once the bowl has been thoroughly cleaned, it is time to add the matcha. The host adds two large scoops of matcha into the bowl. In this case, the host is preparing usucha, a normal matcha, but she may also use more matcha and less water to create a powerful koicha, or thick matcha. Next, water is added to the bowl using the hishaku, or bamboo ladle. Finally, the host begins the whisking of the matcha. The bamboo whisk is specifically designed to mix the matcha into the water in a perfect way. The whisk also creates small air bubbles in the tea, giving it a smooth and creamy taste. The host starts by scraping off the sides of the tea bowl and then moves into a diagonal movement to create a foamy texture. Once the matcha has been prepared, the host presents the bowl to the guest, with the most decorative side facing them. This is a sign of humility and respect, allowing others to enjoy the most beautiful part of the bowl. When the guest is finished with the matcha, they place the bowl on the other section of the tatami mat. Sweets are also an important part of the tea ceremony. These are served alongside the matcha to enhance the sweet flavor of the tea. This Japanese sweet, or wagashi, 
is made with chestnuts to complete the wood theme of the tea ceremony. But how are these delicious wagashi made? To find out, I would have to head out to Nara, Japan's original capital.